What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of Teamer Adventures in Standard. Obviously this is a deck, uh, like we said in the first video, that is tested and proven. We all know it's very good. Uh, and so this is a bit of a learning experience for me on just how to play it. Uh, if you did watch the first video, which I encourage you to do so, uh, we did fairly well despite a number of misplays on my end. Um, I certainly was not playing uh, super, super cleanly, so I'm hoping that we can better that this time around. Uh, keeping in mind, too, we may be having some network issues, so I'm going to do the best I can to get through this video for you guys, but uh, I do apologize if frames get a little rough uh, at some point during this. We've not only had network issues throughout the weekend, but we've also had, uh, or we're, we're getting a storm literally right now, and so uh, I'm hoping that we can get this in and hopefully our network doesn't crash in the middle of it. So we'll do the best we can, um, but regardless, I really do appreciate you guys sticking out and watching these videos. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the new setup as well. Uh, we'll, we'll keep working on it to hopefully better it as we go along, um, but uh, really, really excited to, to have a bit of a more magic themed uh, background going. Um, also, just wanna let you know again, I did mention this in the first video, but uh, if you would like to get the August rewards for Patreon, you can certainly do that. You can still sign up today uh, until the end of the day. Uh, and if you do, you will be entered to win. Or, or not to win, excuse me. You will be entered. You will get your, your rewards. Uh, they will be sent out either this evening or tomorrow morning. Um, and so we'll, we'll get those out to you guys as quickly as we can. For anybody that doesn't know, uh, the Patreon rewards are always sent out at the end of every month. Um, and the reason we do that is just for anybody who's signing up last minute, we'd like to make sure that we get them uh, without any hiccups. As well, we'd also like to make sure that, um, you know, anybody that's, that, um, there we go, anybody that, you know, switches tiers in the middle of the month for any reason or anything like that uh, has the opportunity to, you know, to get their rewards um, without any hiccups. So. That's kind of where we're at with those, and that's why we do it that way. Um, hopefully that is understandable for all of you. We're going to play another Innkeeper here. Um, might have been better to have played the Love Struck Beast. We'll see. Um, and again, this is where I'm like questioning little plays like that. So would it have been better to have just played uh, the, the Heart's Desire here to get another little 1-1 one -one out? Um, and then next turn be able to get full value by playing just a Love Struck Beast? Or are we doing it here where we, we play out the two innkeepers and now we've got a love struck beast that gets to come down and draw two cards, but we didn't get the one one off of it. Um, I think this might be better. Um, this kind of, not guarantees, but hopefully kind of reassures us that we'll at least get to draw a card um, because chances are they could just have a burn spell here, uh, in which case we're in, you know, we're never going to block with these, but they may be able to kill one. Um, and so it's nice to be able to at least, hopefully, at least get uh, a little value off of it. But we'll see. Um, this deck tends to be slightly slow against these mono red decks. This player is a little bit slow just in general to play, uh, which is a little frustrating. But we'll we'll get through it. Uh, frames are actually doing okay. Wow, that is a lot of damage. My goodness. Um, well, here we go. Gonna be taking six, I believe. Yep. Uh, this opponent really playing slowly. I wonder what's going on there. That seems a bit strange. Um, also, yeah, it's starting to rain a good bit now, so I'm really hoping that the network doesn't crash. Uh, please let me get through this. Um, all right. We took it. May not have been the best idea, but that's what we're doing. Uh, I'm just going to play this out now. Uh, this is a strong blocker, so it's just something that they kind of have to deal with. Not going to attack here, though, just in case we need some blockers here. Um, I'd rather be able to block than deal two damage. So, um, you know, it's not ideal, but it is something. Uh, let's see. I wonder what our best play next turn is. I mean, we'll see what we draw, but... Uh, we might just be able to play out this shield, or excuse me, play the Beanstalk Giant uh, and then get this Shield Breaker down, draw a couple cards, uh, as well as getting a little ramp in. So that way we can get this Beanstalk Giant going as quickly as we can. That might be the best opportunity here. Um, chances are we're not going to win this game. <laughs> uh, 
just realistically. Um, if they have any burn spell, they have ways to deal with this love struck beast. Uh, love struck beast, excuse me. Um, and so we're gonna block here, but we're also gonna be in some serious trouble, I believe. Alright, so they all are dealing too, so it does not matter which I block. I was curious to see if they, you know, powered one up to three, uh, in which case a shock would deal with the love struck beast, but in this case, no. Very interesting. So what, a, um, a Rimrock Knight? Does that do it? We'll see. Goodness, it's really raining now. All right, let's do this and let's see what happens. My guess is that they're going to be able to kill this love struck beast. They could also just have an ember cleave, in which case we're like super dead. Um, there's really not much we can do about that. Uh, we do have a way to kill an ember cleave, which is nice, but it's still not going to be really enough to, to keep us in this game, I don't believe. Goodness, the opponent is playing very, very slowly. This is a bit frustratingly slow to me. Um, I Let me be very clear in saying that if you play slow, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, nine times out of ten, you're learning a new deck or you're you're maybe even entering a new format. You're just trying to make sure that you, you've thought of every possible line. So especially if you're trying to be competitive, you should play slow. Uh, by all means, play slow. Uh, but in this situation where it's a mono red deck, there's usually only one or two avenues that you can take and so it's a bit frustrating when slow play is such a problem um that was such an odd play um sure i guess all right um well that was different <laughs> uh let's do this we're gonna draw our two cards first man two lands well oh, that's unfortunate uh, then let's do this. Fay of Wishes. Okay. Uh, we're just trying to flood the board. Uh, that's literally all we're trying to do. We need to make sure that we've got ways to kill these guys uh, as best we can, at least. Um, I'd, I would love to get the Beanstalk Giant down and, like, ramp a little bit, but we couldn't necessarily afford it there, and I was really playing to the out of a Bone Crusher Giant. If we had gotten a Bone Crusher Giant, we would have been able to deal with a Fervent Champion, which would have gotten us in a much better position. Um, but here we are. All right. Come on, opponent. They are going to time every single time. That's just ridiculous. We are at almost eight minutes. This is game one. That's pretty bad. And when one of the decks is a mono red deck, I should say that's pretty bad. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. And I think we just do this. We just block it all. Um, I kind of hate doing that, but I think it's the best we can do. And it also gives us at least uh, kind of an out. Um, it's not a great one, <laughs> but we hopefully can live no matter what here. These Scorch Spitters are pretty annoying as well. Just that they always peg for at least one damage is very, very frustrating. Uh, and you can see this is a situation where with Fae of Wishes, if we needed, if we had the time and were able to pull out a um, a uh, Shadow Spear, might be able to do a little bit with this, but we'll see. Interesting Bone Crusher Giant play. Why are they... Uh, this this person is very puzzling to me. Uh, not that they're wrong in what they're doing. It's just very odd. And they miss their shot with that as well. Alright, something, something weird's going on here. Something is not correct. Okay, so if we do this, um, we can then still play a land. So let's, let's do this. Get a green source here. Get this out. Get a second Love Struck Beast out. And then draw two. We have drawn so many lands. Look at all these lands. <laughs> um, Alright. Well, here we go. Opponent really playing strangely. Um, I don't think that they're playing correctly either. 
Uh, this is a situation where we may want to Fate of Wishes for that Shadow Sphere. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Just to give us a little bit of uh, encouragement here. <laughs> Um, let me just look and see what other stuff could we have. So that mitigates five. Eh, doesn't seem great. Let's do this. Uh, let's play this. Let's play this out here. Is it going to gain us six life? Uh, it also has tramples, so, I mean, it will get through for some damage here. And this just gets us out of range of some burn stuff. Um, and now we're not quite so on edge at every little draw that they have. If they have any kind of burn spell, it's fine. Like, we can we can deal with it. And they just gave up. This was the strangest game. Um, all right. Well, we got there. <laughs> so strange. So strange. All right. Let's jump into uh, game two. Hard to believe it's only game two. What card did we get? Keeper of Fables. Yay. All right. Game two. Here we go. Uh, worth noting our frames were significantly better there. Hopefully they stay good. Stay high. Stay at 30. We need 30. That's what we're trying for. All right. What do we got? What do we got? We'll keep. This is a bit slow. Uh, so hopefully we're not against anything too crazy. Looks like Simic Ramp maybe. Or Sultai Ramp. Uh, Teamer. Okay. Well, we'll do the best we can. We'll see what they're doing. Uh, this could be very bad for us, but we'll... Oh, it's a Neoform deck. Dude, Neoform is sweet. I'm loving Neoform lately. Uh, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah, the Neoform is, for those of you who haven't been around very long, uh, it's very similar to Birthing Pod. Uh, it's just kind of a one-shot deal. Um, what Birthing Pod is, is it's an artifact that lets you sack a creature and then essentially take whatever CMC that creature was and go one higher to pull out a card uh, and put it onto the battlefield. Um, a creature, specifically. And so, it's very, very powerful. Um, you can certainly do a lot with it, but... It's uh, I know, I noticed this somewhere. it's interesting. Neoform is kind of the one-shot version of that. Oh my goodness, gruesome menagerie. Okay, dude, I am in for whatever this deck is doing. I am in. <laughs> uh, let's play the edge keeper or innkeeper, excuse me. Let's just go ahead and play this out. We do need to make sure that we get these down as quickly as we can, so we've got the mana. Um, interesting. Very interesting deck. Uh. See what they search for. Risen Reef. Oh, this is just a Yarok deck. Okay. Cool. They milled a Jace. <laughs> Maybe they won't have a play. Oh, they had a play. We are up against some strange decks, people. That is all I'm saying. <laughs> this is so weird. Not opposed to it. It's just so strange. Um... So we can Fey here. What do we need? Uh, I guess let's just get a blue. Um, we can Fey here, and I think that that's probably correct. I don't know what the heck we're trying to get though. Um, maybe the lantern. I think the lantern. Um, this just gets rid of their entire graveyard. Like, that's good enough, I think. Uh, against a Tamiyo, that's pretty huge. Uh, they do get to pull something back, worth noting, but they they need to do it now, otherwise they lose it. So we'll see. And they may take a risk, I don't know, but we'll, we'll handle it as best we can. Um, the Lantern is a very cool card, though. I really like this one. Just gives us a way to deal with the graveyard. Would they pull Jace? Okay. That makes sense. Alright. Sure. 
Uh, worth noting, we might be able to win just with a well-timed Brazen Borrower. We just bounce Jace as they draw their last card. Uh, that does work, uh, which is hilarious. Um, let's play you. What else is in their graveyard? V Battlefield. Uh, v Browser. All right, let's see. What do we want to get? Probably a Yarok. I don't really know that that's correct, but that's what we're gonna do. Um, hmm. I think we need to kill that. And then we probably just play out the Fae of Witches. Nice that we get to draw. Um, all right. This just gives us a nice little blocker for the Cloudkin Seer. Okay, we'll let him do this. And find. They missed. That's pretty good. Um, and so we're in this position where we literally just get to exile this in response to them using Tamiyo, and then we also have Brazen Borrower, so if they, for some reason, get to mill their deck... Oh, well. Just gonna make them do it. Now's the time, I think. Um, okay, so now, though, if they do decide to mill themselves out, then we just get to bounce it. We kind of always have to leave up two mana, but oh, it's not what they're going for. That's different. Hmm. Well, we'll see what they're going to do. This is interesting. We've drawn quite a lot of land. All right, let's do this. Oh, look, more land. Um. Hmm. Let's play you and let's play you. Let's play a Lucky Clover. Probably could have attacked there at Tamiya, but it doesn't really get us anywhere. So I don't think it's worth it to. They're still missing on their Risen Reeves though. Um, okay. I mean, sure. Interesting. Um, what do they get it to? Is it just Fibblethip? Yeah. Okay. So they have 20 cards left in their deck. Um, oh, they did get the Risen Reef. Nice job. And a land. Okay. Keep going. Just don't do it this turn, and we can potentially just get him. Hmm. Now, what is going to be the best play? So we can do this. Play the land. Um, we kind of need to leave up two no matter what, I think. So we can Fae of Wishes get two cards. I think that's probably a good idea. Okay. That's not a bad one. Um, hmm. Let's get you. Let's get you. Um, just and on the off chance that we need to actually go for this. Uh, then I think we'll just play this. Um, okay. Not going to attack. So next turn we get to wipe the board with Ugin if we would like. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we get to wipe the board 
which is pretty good. Um, and then we're in a position where like we can just start to take over theoretically. And they also are going to be down on resources. They only have 17 cards left in their deck. We've got 33. Um, they've used, I want to say, all of their Neoforms are now gone. Yeah. Um, we've also gotten two Yarox, which may be all the Yarox they have. We'll see. Um, still have some Risen Reeves left. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. This is a really cool matchup, though. I like this. Um, really, the name of the game is to survive until you get the right moment, I think. So, hopefully we do that. Um, also worth noting, we haven't seen any, like, counter magic kind of stuff, um, in their, their hand here, which is really important because that just means we are fairly safe to be able to bounce the Jace, um, so in a situation where they just get to get really lucky, essentially, and get all the way through their deck, we just Brazen Borrower. They are just timing out here, though. So maybe they're just not there. That's also a possibility. <laughs> uh, we could also just try and kill the Jace at some point, like, regardless, but I don't think we need to. Oh. I think four. I That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> you are to free. Actually, uh, no, I actually don't think we really need that at this point. We don't. I mean, card draw is very good, but um, I think we're okay at the moment. They do know about this Sublime Epiphany, so they do know that we've got just counter magic uh, available to us at some point here. Kind of ruins it when you just pull it out of the sideboard and, like, your opponent knows about it, but, um, you know, still there. Still a very key card for them to have to deal with. Um, and once they play out a couple things, it's a really good way to just, like, very, very quickly take over. Uh, you really turn the tides with a card like that. And with Ugin, obviously. So, I think we definitely are just going to win, but, like, they may have just timed out. I don't, I don't really know. Um, I still can't get over that first game. That was a weird game. That was fun, but it was weird. Alright. Okay, they just timed out. That was a little strange. Um, man, we are just up against the strangest happenstances today. All right, uh, one more, and we will see how we do. We're at 23 minutes already. My goodness. Uh, this deck is a bit slow. I mean, it's not necessarily known for being, like, the fastest thing in the world. Uh, nice. Oh, let's do our final. I think this is our last mastery, like, orb thing. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Let's do our, our thing. Oh no, we've got one more. You can ask it to suggest a pick. Uh, how? How? What's the code for that telling you? Is it like however much you play a specific color, maybe that's the one you should go for? That's weird. It's very weird. Alright, last one. Let's see how we do. Uh, so far we are four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four and one. So we're doing pretty well. Uh, do we keep this? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit slow, but hopefully it, it works out. Uh, let's go ahead and Fabled Passage. We'll get a blue source here with this. That way we've got all of our colors, uh, and we know we're not doing anything this first turn anyway. So now we've got a Brazen Borrower available to us, uh, if we'd like it. Go ahead and Lucky Clover. Chances are they're just going to ramp into, like, a questing beast here, in which case we get to Bone Crusher, kill it, uh, thanks to Lucky Clover. So, ooh, and if not, we might even get luckier and be able to two-for-one this. Sure. Okay. Um, let's do this. Maybe we just pass. 
Yeah, I think we're just gonna pass. Let's see what they do. In response to the counter going on it, I guess we can... That's interesting. All right, let's see what happens. So we do get to two for one this though, which is kind of nice. So we get to kill the wild crafter. This is not a card I expected to see. Really? They're doing this in... Guys, they're messing up. <laughs> that doesn't... That doesn't... That doesn't work. And now we have a better target, potentially. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just gonna kill that. I mean, why not? I'd rather kill that. Uh, sorry for the frames, guys. We were doing so well, um, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm taking the opportunity, guys. <laughs> Immediate give up. Wow, uh, well that was clean. Um, that was, I think, just poor playing on their part though, overall. Wow, all right, so, uh, well, let's talk about Team Air Adventures. Who didn't think it was good? Raise your hand. Um, we all knew Team Air Adventures has been good for quite some time, uh, but it's not a deck that we've played much of on the channel, and so I thought, like I said, I would take the time, try and get to know it a little bit better, uh, and I'm really glad I did. I think that this is a nice deck. I really, really like it. Uh, obviously, it's very good, um, but it's kind of nice to be able to, to say for sure, you know, f through experience, how it would be played and that kind of thing. Um, all that to be said, I did not play perfectly. <laughs> Uh, very clearly, I did not play perfectly. There were uh, quite a lot of misplays with this deck uh, overall on my end. This is one of those decks that it's very easy to misplay on, but that doesn't take away the fact that it still happens. So my, my if I could share anything for you, uh, it's that if you do try and play test this deck and actually try and really, really sit down and learn the deck like you should, uh, not just in best of one, but also in, in best of three and throughout everything, try just really really keep it keep track of your plays because there's a lot there uh there's a lot that can be done uh and not necessarily a lot that should be done so you've, you've got a lot of options throughout most of the 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 parts of a turn so uh just keep that in mind as you go through this one it's a really cool deck it's a really fun deck i know we're a bit late to the party to play it but uh just really glad we did i thought this was a fun one so uh thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it uh, we'll of course jump into historic tomorrow. That's the plan. Uh, and so do keep track of that. Uh, really excited. We'll see what kind of deck we want to do. Uh, make sure to leave your deck suggestions in the discord. I haven't talked about that in a while, but you certainly can. Uh, and very soon, obviously we'll have Zendikar rising coming out and I'm really excited to get my hands on some of that. That's going to be fun. So, uh, stay tuned for all that, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next gameplay video.